My beloved brothers and sisters in this beautiful town or city of Milton Keynes, one of the favors of Allah Almighty upon us is the fact that we are part of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The teachings of Islam are unlike the teachings of any other faith. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him taught us absolutely everything, even how to cleanse after using the bathroom. And this was the pride of the companions when they said, May Allah be pleased with the companions. They used to say the Prophet peace be upon him has left no goodness except that he taught us. And he has left no evil except that he warned us about. Including the means of cleansing after having relieved yourself. If we have knowledge that goes as deep as that, imagine the gift and favor of Allah upon us. People would be embarrassed to speak about certain things that Islam has made a cornerstone in order to qualify to be able to pray to Allah Almighty. One must arrive at a certain level of cleanliness and purity at least. At least we should try our best. None of us are perfect. We will never be perfect. But we should attempt to fulfill that which Allah Almighty has ordained to the best of our ability. The issue of knowledge is something that really many take for granted. We work day in, day out, we sweat, we earn, and we pay our rentals and we struggle to put a plate of food on the table on a daily basis and to pay our bills. And all that is very important. If we do it in the correct sense, with the correct intention, we will earn a reward for. But what's more important than all of that is to seek knowledge. To learn about your faith primarily for you to be able to recognize your maker. For you to be able to recognize the favor of Allah upon you. My brothers, my sisters, do you realize one of the biggest gifts that you and I have is that Allah has given us the ability to put our heads on the ground for the one who made us and say in that posture and position, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, glorifying and praising our Lord, the one who made us, who is the highest. That's the favor of Allah. I thank Allah day and night for giving me the opportunity and acceptance for allowing me to put my head on the ground for the one who made me alone and no one else and nothing else. The one whom I'm going to return to when I die for indeed he is the one who created me in the first place. Subhanallah, that's a favor of Allah. That's a gift. When people say acts of worship, we as Muslims say we render them for Allah alone. Hence, when you want to declare your faith in Allah, you have to say, La ilaha illallah. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. If you want to know the meaning of it, it means I'm not going to worship anyone besides Allah because to me, He is the one who's worthy of worship. That's amazing. That's unique. So if one were to ask you as a Muslim, who do you worship? It's such a powerful answer when you say, I only worship whoever made me. That's it. Subhanallah. Why do you worship him? I worship him because he made me in the first place. I was with him before I was born and I will be with him after I die. This is just a temporary abode. What did he send to you? He sent to me messengers with messages. What was the message? The message that I have is known as the Quran. Primarily. What is the Quran? It's the word of my maker. My brothers and sisters, are you not going to make an effort to learn the word of your maker? Come on. We can do better. We have phones, we have technology, we have applications. We have so much that, we, that is available to us. We're going to be questioned about it. This verse I've recited now, Surah Al-Ma'un, Allah Almighty has, in fact, it's not Surah Al-Ma'un, Allah Almighty has told us clearly, and I'm sure we know the verse off by heart, most of us, you are definitely going to be questioned about the favors of Allah upon you, the gifts He bestowed upon you, the ni'mah, the boons that He favored you with. One of them is your mobile phone technology, the internet and so on. What did you do with it to get closer to Allah? That's it. Many of us unfortunately use it forgetting Allah, and that's quite respectful in the sense that I'm wording it respectfully. We use it forgetting Allah or it goes a bit worse than that. We use it 
to distance ourselves from Allah, surely we can do better. I can do better. You can do better. Say a few good things on your phone, on your mobile, on your accounts. When you die, there might be a few bad things, but at least there'll be a lot of good things. I'm not encouraging you regarding the bad, but I'm encouraging you regarding the good. When the good will eclipse the bad, you've succeeded. Because remember on the day of judgment, another favor of Allah Almighty is He weighs your deeds. Imagine if you were told, if you have a bad deed, you're going to hell. Allah says, no, no. If you have more good deeds than bad, you go to heaven. Subhanallah, you go to paradise. He knows and he acknowledges the fact that you and I are going to do a few things we're not so proud of. That's Allah. He knows that. But Allah says, we will still put your deeds on a scale. You have more good, less bad. Well done. You're a good person. Allahu Akbar. But I'm a human. I will falter. I have desires. I have whims and fancies. I need to learn to control them because I should not usurp the right of another. More than anyone else, I shouldn't usurp the right of Allah. But my beloved brothers and sisters, surely if you increase your knowledge, you'll be able to understand that I need to do something to connect myself with my maker very soon. I'm going to go back to him. And when I go back to him, what is it that is going to take me to paradise? Can I tell you? It's the mercy of Allah. None of your deeds would take you to paradise. But the mercy of Allah will take you to paradise. You must be saying moments ago you told us to do good deeds and now you're telling us your deeds are not going to take you to paradise. Well, I can explain very easily your deeds call on and bring about the mercy of Allah. And that's what will take you to paradise. Let me give you an example. I will fulfill my five daily prayers to the best of my ability. But what will that do for me? Well, when I was praying, I had concentration that was not 100% and none of us can ever have 100% concentration. Perhaps 90, 80, when football's going on, 60 and so on. My brothers, my sisters, the fact that you try to fulfill the pillar of Islam, Allah loves you because your duty was to try your best. Did you try your best? Yes, I did. What was your concentration levels? Wallahi, it was not as it should be, but may Allah accept it from me. Allah says, I've accepted it from you because you tried your best. And what did Allah give you in return? His mercy. That's what he gave you. And as a result of his mercy, where did you go? You went to Jannatul Firdaus, to paradise. So as a Muslim, I'm weak. You are weak. We have an environment of reality out there that is filled with pressure, dragging us and pulling us, tossing us and turning us in the wrong direction. And what are we doing? We're trying our best given the circumstances. Worship Allah alone in the best possible way. Subhanallah. When a person is in an environment that is very far from Allah and he is trying his best to be as close to Allah as possible. Don't you think even if there was a little bit of weakness on his side, Allah will look at him with the eye of mercy to say, my servant, you've done very well. Allahu Akbar. Have hope, my brothers, my sisters. Learn more about Allah. Learn about Allah Almighty. Pick up the Quran. Like I said, you have it on your phone. Find out what Allah was telling you and is telling you. Ask yourself, how can I become a better person? And don't become despondent. Why do I say don't become despondent? Many of us, when we start practicing Islam correctly, we become or we want to become perfectionists. You are just a human. You're not going to be perfect. When you make your wudu and your, what we call the ablution, there might be a little error or two that you may not notice. It's okay. What did I say earlier? Try your best. Did you? Yes, I did. Well, Allah has accepted it. Sometimes people say, you know, I feel that I probably might have not been as clean as I should be. Did you try your best? Yes, well, leave the rest to Allah. It's okay. He knows you're a human. Subhanallah. Then when you pray, like I said earlier, the fact that you tried and you did your units of prayer, you may have perhaps not had it 100%, maybe nowhere near 100%. But the fact that you tried, the fact that you did it, Allah Almighty's mercy is close. When you read the words of the Quran, one letter gives you 10 rewards. Imagine reading one page. I've already clocked a few thousand rewards. Are we ready to do it? The month of Ramadan is around the corner, my brothers, my sisters. It's also known as the month of the Quran. Start from now. Download the apps, start reading them. Don't be lazy, fight your laziness. I know the weather is quite cold and wearing all our cozy jackets and all that. Mashallah, we feel a bit lazy, subhanallah at times. But fight your laziness. And you find the mercy of Allah comes to those who fight their laziness. Work hard. Allah has developed mankind in a unique way that those who don't want to get up and work hard will not achieve. My beloved children, there is a trend of sleeping. Now, a trend of sleeping. Don't worry, I'll make some quick money, but I can sleep. Sleep 
at the right time, the right amount, the right place. And you achieve the mercy of Allah. Sleep too much, you have a problem. Sleep in the wrong place, you have a bigger problem. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. And we prefer to sleep at night, especially for those of us who don't have anything better to do. It's a sunnah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has instructed that to us because the Quran says we created the night for you to recline and to rest. And we created the day for you to work. Obviously, if you're a security guard working in the evening, you can't uh, sleep and say, well, you know what? I was told that I can sleep at night. Well, that's the job of a person. May Allah Almighty bless all of us. So my brothers, my sisters, the favors of Allah are plenty. One of them is the mobile phone you have in your hand. It's a favor of Allah. But the question is, are you not going to use it to do good things? Are you not going to stop some of the bad that you might have been dragged into by whatever? As you're flicking through your device and it's a reality. I will not tell you do not use your device or throw it away. Use it, but be responsible. As you're flicking through, if there is anything you see that you're not supposed to be seeing, the same lowering gaze rule applies there as well. You can flick it. You don't have to keep it on. I remember a youngster telling me, well, you told us the same lowering gaze rule and the lowering gaze rule goes as follows. When you see something you're not supposed to be seeing, that first glance is excused. The minute you get to a second one, you have a problem. It's a sinful one. So he says, well, I just leave it where it was. And I just kept looking. It was the same thing, you know. <laughs> My beloved child, don't fool yourself. You know what's right. You know what's wrong. As you saw, you flick up and you say, Astaghfirullah. I don't want to see that. And don't intentionally go into where you're not supposed to go into. The reason why we have to talk about this is because there are people, young and old, who sometimes don't realize that, you know, on the device, there will be things that may pop up that you're not supposed to, as a Muslim, be involved in. So what you do, you just keep it moving. You keep it moving, mashallah, tabarakallah. That doesn't mean I'm encouraging you to waste your time. I'm only teaching you what to do when that happens. See, some of the youngsters are, are happy, smiling. Well, I hope you can actually follow that advice. Because on the day of judgment, you will be asked about your device. Allah says, the verse that I just read earlier, you will be asked, how did you use it? Inshallah, if the good is more than the bad, what will happen? We will earn the mercy of Allah. May Allah Almighty help all of us and grant us goodness. My beloved brothers, my sisters, remember that we are fortunate. Today, we are here in the house of Allah. We are listening to something that would remind us to get closer to Allah. That's the whole aim and intention of a Friday being compulsory to go and listen to a message. It says, يَسْتَمِعُونَ dhikr. The angels listen to the message as well. The idea of this message is to give you a dose of goodness so that up to the next week, you can feel that closeness to Allah Almighty. And then as we tend to drift a little bit here and there. It's already next week, Friday. We come back into the masjid. We're reminded again, hey guys, remember, be careful. Let's get closer to Allah. And that reminder helps the believers. What I have said today is not new to anyone. You know it. And so do I. But it's the reminder. Wadakir fa inna dhikra tanfa'ul mu'mineen. Allah says, true believers will always benefit from the repeated reminder. May Allah Almighty help us. I also encourage you the encouragement of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to develop a better relationship with Allah as the days pass. I want to present to you another instruction of Allah to protect yourselves from falsehood, from deceiving others, to protect yourself from abusing others and being vulgar with one another. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, instructs us to be kind to one another, even with the expression on your face. He instructs us to be honest and upright in business and in everything else. He instructs us to honor the guest who visits us. He instructs us so much of goodness and justice and kindness that the verse that is repeated mostly on a Friday, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'idil qurba. Allah Almighty instructs you to be just and kind and to give to your relatives who don't have. Wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. And Allah prohibits you from immorality and evil or sin, and that which is in transgression of Allah Almighty. So that is the instruction and the reminder that I have for you today. And more than anyone else, this instruction is for myself. I ask Allah Almighty to bless you all and to grant goodness and to grant blessings, not just to you, but your offspring as well, your communities, your families. May Allah Almighty keep us steadfast on this beautiful deen, this lovely faith that has come with lots of beautiful Guidelines that ensure great discipline. Islam is a faith 
of discipline. And when we discipline ourselves, we gain the contentment of this world and the success of the next. And if the favor of Allah encompasses us beyond, he will grant us the success beyond contentment of this world and the success of the next.